All right, now we need to talk about cheat sheets. Um, and a lot of you might understand what cheat sheets are just from the term cheat sheet, but let's go through that a little bit, uh, a little bit more in detail. Cheat sheets are tips and tricks. They're troubleshooting notes. They are workarounds. Really, they're frequently asked questions. And they're organized, if you notice here, in the exact same manner as workflows. So you have this public folder that is full, full of frequently asked Autodesk questions. The common questions that people ask, and there's literally now thousands of these in here, where I'm going to change the topic a little bit. Let's go to just, uh, you know, maybe just AutoCAD here. And we have this cheat sheet of, uh, let me find it real quickly, fixing a corrupt drawing. I, one of my favorite ones to show because it's so easy to explain. Any of us that's used an AutoCAD DWG before knows every once in a while that thing is going to become corrupted for a lot of various reasons. Autodesk is a great company and great products, but every once in a while we run into a corrupt drawing. Well, here's a quick cheat sheet that walks people through how to recover that drawing. You know, little tips and tricks here on how to go about um, fixing that drawing so you can move on with your project. That's a good way to encapsulate what these cheat sheets are. It's all of these FAQs that people have around all these various products of Autodesk. So a lot of good value in here, and I don't want to you know, spend too much time showing you a whole bunch of examples. I think you probably get the idea now. So let's talk about this custom folder. Depending on your role in the organization, whether you're a user, whether you might be a CAD or a BIM manager, maybe you're a project manager, maybe you're a principal or an associate, you know, you're going to look at this in a variety of different ways. But I think all of us can look at it ourselves and look at our company that there are common questions that get asked on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. That same question that gets asked over and over and over again, and that is a time waster. It wastes whoever's time is asking the question, and it's wasting whoever's time is answering that question. So what we would want you to do with the Pinnacle series is, is look to those power users in your firm and have them document the common questions that they get asked. It's really easy to look at yourself and say, what's the 10 most common questions I get on a daily basis? Let's document them here in the system. Now, a few examples to show. Uh, first one here, it's in the manufacturing space, but it has to do with anything that we can, we, something that we can all relate to. It has to do with uh, layer structures. So if you're an AutoCAD house or a civil 3D house, layers are important. Um, it's not so much in the Revit world, obviously, but here a company went in and they put their layer standards in Pinnacle. And the reason they did that is because now it's one next to everything else in Pinnacle. So there's a one-stop shop for these types of questions. And two, it's searchable. That's important. You want to have these things searchable so that somebody can simply key in some keywords, find that layer, layer standard, and move on uh, you know, with that question. A couple other simple examples, a little bit outside of the Autodesk space, but adding in a network printer. If you've ever run into a situation where you brought a new printer online, how many times did you get the question, how do I add that printer to my machine? How do I add that driver in? Or I lost my drivers. Well, here's a quick cheat sheet, more in the IT type type of question, IS type of question, but quick cheat sheet in there. Uh, setting up voicemail. Just another common question that people have, new hire comes in, how do you set up voicemail? Here's a quick cheat sheet on how to do that. So really simple topic here. It's about capturing those common questions that get asked on a daily basis. What's the reason for this? It's about productivity. These questions happen all the time. People waste time trying to find that answer, asking people the same question over and over. Get those documented here, searchable, so that you can move on from these very, very quickly. And maybe a, a task that took 30, 30 minutes before comes down to about a five-minute task. Productivity. Keep moving on here. Let's jo jump into videos now. So at this point in the presentation, you probably have a good understanding of what I'm going to say here, but I'm going to say it anyways just to make sure that we're all clear. So these videos are truly a um, catalog or a library of uh, media or videos, and they're organized, again, in the same manner. Now, under the custom folder, a lot of organizations, and, and you might fit into this, you might not, but a lot of organizations will do internal training events, whether they may be lunch and learns or little short video clips that people create. Record all those things, get it into the system here so that it's searchable next to everything else. You know, easy concept there. Now, the public folder, though, what I want to spend a little bit of time on is the types of videos that we supply. So we supply two different forms. There's how-to and recorded training. 
the how-to collection, these ones are shorter videos. I'm going to go into the Navisworks just to keep changing the, the topics around a little bit. And let's say right now I'm working on a project and I need to run a clash detection test in Navisworks, but I don't remember how to do it. I've done it in the past, I just can't remember how to do it. Well, here's a short eight-minute video teaching me how to run that clash detection test. So really short, bite-sized chunk of information. Right when I need it, I can go into this while I'm working on my project, and it can help me through, be more productive, be more efficient in that project. So that's really the point of these how-to videos, just bite-sized chunks, five to 10 minute long videos. But in some cases, we still need the deeper dive training. We need you know, to know, learn about all the options, all the settings, we need, a, we need that deeper dive. So let's say you know, my example now isn't that I'm working on a project, but I'm preparing myself for an upcoming project, and I have a little bit of training time on my hands. Well, here's a video, it's 49 minutes in length, and this is going to teach me on checking for conflicts in Navisworks, and this is now going to go through a much more in-depth look at this, uh, this feature set within Navisworks and teach me that much more deep, you know, much more in detail than what the five-minute video could do before. So two different videos, the reason for that is there's different needs out there. Sometimes we're under the gun, have that deadline, but we're stuck on something. Short five-minute video is perfect for me. In other cases, I want to improve my skill sets and I want to get a deeper dive. Here's a, about a 45-minute training video to help me through that.